In this lesson, we will examine a useful strategy to consider when tackling data sufficiency questions. Now, as you may know, some data sufficiency questions provide useful information in addition to posing a question. In this example, the target question asks us to determine the number of boys in a certain class. But we are also given some information about the class. It has 27 children. In cases where additional information is provided, it's often useful to summarize the information before examining the statements. There are two primary benefits to this strategy. First, it will help to focus your reading by forcing you to summarize the information provided. Second, once you have summarized all of the information, you probably won't have to go back and reread the passage since everything has already been summarized. This can save you valuable time. So let's practice summarizing information. In this example, we are told that there are 27 students in a class and some are boys. So let's let B equal the number of boys in the class. And since each child will be either a boy or a girl, let's let G equal the number of girls. We are told that there are 27 children in total, so we can write B plus G equals 27. Finally, the target question asks us to determine the number of boys, which we can summarize as follows. Now that we have summarized all of the information, we can examine the statements. Beginning with statement 1, we are told that the number of boys is twice the number of girls. So using the variables we assigned earlier, we can write the number of boys b is equal to 2 times the number of girls. Now does this provide enough information to answer the target question? Well, if we add to this information the information we summarized earlier, we see that we have two equations. Since we could use these equations to solve for b, we know that statement 1 is sufficient. Now on to statement 2. Here we are told that the number of boys is 9 more than the number of girls. So we can write the number of boys b is equal to the number of girls g plus 9. Once again, if we add the information we derived earlier, we have two equations which we could use to solve for b. So statement 2 is sufficient, which means our answer is D. Let's try a few more of these. Here we are told that the average of three numbers is negative 10, and we want to find the value of Y. So how can we summarize this information? Well, if the average of three numbers is negative 10, we could say that the sum of the three numbers divided by 3 will be equal to negative 10. Or, if we multiply both sides of this equation by 3, we could say that the sum of the three numbers is equal to negative 30. Since the target question asks us to find the value of y, we can write the following. At this point, we have neatly summarized all of the relevant information, and we are now ready to examine the statements. Here's another example. Here we have three integers, their product is odd, and we want to find the value of w times x. How can we summarize this? Well, what does it mean if we know that the product of three integers is odd? For the product of three integers to be odd, it must be the case that each integer is odd. So let's write that. The target question asks us to find the value of wx, so we'll write this. Here's another example. The point 3a to b lies on the line y equals 5x plus 1, and we want to find the value of b. How would you summarize this? Well, we have a line defined by this equation, and we know that this point lies on the line. What else can we write? Well, keep in mind that the point 3a to b consists of an x value and a y value. If this point lies on the line, then the coordinates of this point must satisfy the equation of the line. In other words, we can replace y with 2b and replace x with 3a to get the following equation, which we can rewrite as 2b equals 15a plus 1. Now the target question asks us to find the value of b, so we'll write this to remind us of that. One last example. Tahir receives a base salary, 
plus 5% commission on his total sales revenue. We want to determine Tahir's total sales revenue for last month. To summarize this, let's let B equal Tahir's base salary, let R equal his total sales revenue last month, and let P equal his total pay last month. Now what else can we write? Well, if his commission is 5% of his total sales revenue, we can write that his commission for any given month is equal to 0 0.05 times R. We can also say that P, his total pay last month, is equal to B, his monthly base salary, plus his commission, which is equal to 0 0.05 R. Now the target question asks us to find Tahir's total sales revenue, so we'll write this to remind us of that. At this point, we have summarized all of the information as well as the target question, so we won't need to reread this passage later. Now before we examine the statements, is there anything else we might consider doing first? Well, we'll talk about that in the next lesson. So, when tackling data sufficiency questions, it's a good idea to summarize the information before examining the statements. You will find that this small investment of time will pay off in the long run.